Hello everyone, this is David, and tonight's movie that we watched is Godzilla, Tokyo SOS. And this is the first, and as far as I'm aware, the only direct sequel in the Millennium series. Um, it picks up where uh, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla left off, and um, they're working on repairs on fixing up uh, Kiru. Let's go into something before we get into that in and of itself, though, before we go into the movie. Um, there's a couple of interesting things that come up. Um, in terms of the monsters in this film. So obviously Godzilla's in here, and obviously Kiru or Mechagodzilla is in this one as well. But Mothra also appears, which is quite quite good to see another, um, another appearance of Mothra. And also we get a uh, cameo of uh, Camobius, or Camobius? I think it's Camobius, at least in the, in the dub. And if you remember... During uh, the My Space Amiibo review, I talked about the giant turtle. Well, the giant turtle's name is Camobius, and he washes up on shore dead. So he's, he gets like a quick guess. He doesn't actually do anything. He's dead, but he's there. And apparently um, the Yogg Space Amoeba guys are still around because they keep making these giant Matamad turtles that they call Cam uh, Camobius. So it's not the first one that they've seen, but it's the first one they've seen in a long time. They actually make reference to the island that he was first seen on where the space amoeba took place. So that's that's an interesting tie into another Toho film from years ago. It seems the Millennium series likes to tie in with um, the older films, and this one actually has a lot of tie-ins that we'll get to when we talk about it. Um, so yeah, it's a little interesting. Uh, little note, Kira gets an upgrade, or a side grade if you will. He doesn't have the absolute zero cannon anymore. Uh, he has a trimazer which, uh, if I haven't explained this before, I don't remember if I have or not, but uh, Mazers are the Japanese um, cannons that they use. Um, they're very distinctive looking. They are basically like a satellite dish on like a long... Um, uh, I forget what it's called. Like a long stock that they can lift up and fire. You see them in a lot of stuff. They never... Uh, they don't describe them in the dub very well like often uh, it's not so much later when they became that they note that they're maser cannons um, and they get used a lot i believe they were first used in war of the gargantuas and some of the later showa era movies i think they showed up in godzilla vs. gigan and godzilla vs. megalon i don't think they were around before that it might have been. I just don't remember them. I mean, they're part of like the military stuff that they always throw at monsters, and once they upgraded their weaponry a little bit, they started using these things. They're just about as effective. Although in this one, they're a little bit better. Anyway, I've, I've kind of gone off on a little tangent. So the question hung in the air, um, how would these two movies uh, step up once you've seen both of them? And that is, uh, they work pretty well together. I prefer this one over... Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, just because there's a lot more monster action going on. Because you got Mothra, you got Mothra's twin offspring again. They're back. Uh, you got Kiru, and you got Godzilla. So I mean, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good monster mash, all things considered. Uh, it's way better than the one on ones that we've been getting. Uh, so that's that's nice. I like it whenever they have multiple monsters fighting one monster because it's a uh, it's a fun uh, thing. A fun project. It's like everyone, we need to stop this guy now, and that comes up a lot in uh, a lot of different things. Actually, it shows up in anime a lot, where there's like one really tough dude that everyone has to fight, or he's gonna like destroy the world, or kill the kingdom, or you know do something bad, and everyone has to team up to fight him. That's like every plot in DBZ, and uh, I'm sure it comes up in a lot of other animes too. But that's the first and foremost that comes to mind. Like every story arc is, oh, there's a big bad, we got to fight. And everyone has to team up to fight him. So that, that happens a little... I like it when that happens in Godzilla, though. Uh, it's interesting to see what monster they pose as the big bad, though. Always uh, always an interesting one. But anyway, let's get to this movie, because we kind of rambled on for a while. So they're fixing up Kiru after his battle with Godzilla. And uh, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. They replace his uh, the Absolute Zero Cannon with the Trimazer, which is interesting. Uh, the Sh Shobinjin show up. And they talk to the guy who originally went from um, the original Mothra movie. I don't know if it's the actual same actor. But they do like to dig up those old actors and bring them back and put them in the movies again. Uh, I've noticed. So I'm hoping it's the same guy. I haven't 
checked, so I don't know. But anyway, so it's allegedly the same guy. Well, it's the same guy, um, what is it, canonically. So uh, that went to Mothra's Island, Infant Island, back in the movie Mothra, and learned about all that stuff. So they show up to him, and they're like, hey, um, we need to talk. You guys need to return Godzilla's bones to the ocean because you basically, uh, from what I understand, like they're like you're playing around with things you shouldn't be playing around with. And my my gist of this is they're disturbing the dead, and you shouldn't disturb the dead. Like you should let the dead be dead and let them rest. But you've modified Godzilla's bones into a weapon in the form of Mecha Godzilla or Kiru, and that's that's not good. That'll bring bad things. So they're like, if you basically retire Kiru, Mothra will defend your country. But if you don't, Mothra's going to get pissed and take out everybody. So the guy's like, okay, well, I understand that. And they're like, yeah, we don't want to fight. Like, understand, like, we're not trying to threaten you. We're just telling you, like, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. And we don't want that to happen. So that's why we're telling you. So he's like, okay, I'll do what I can. And, um... Turns out his nephew is there too, and their and uh, uh, the guy's grandson as well, and uh, it's like a whole family affair. And the um, the the nephew works on the Kiru project or the Mecha Godzilla project, and so he's like, I don't want them to cancel this because I've spent like four years of my life working on this. It's my baby, I love it. And he's like, Well, we gotta do what we gotta do. So that's like a whole subplot that's going on. Meanwhile, Godzilla comes back and he's on the attack. Um, they're trying to trying to figure out. They, they start getting evidence, like the cameo uh, Camobius washes up, and they're like, "Oh crap, things are things are washing up. It's no good." Obviously, killed by Godzilla. And then a submarine goes missing because Godzilla likes to attack submarines for some reason. I'm guessing for their nuclearness, like power. That's the thing. And uh, eventually Godzilla does make his comeback. He starts attacking, and they're like, well, what are we going to do? Well, we can't deploy Kiru just yet. He's not ready to go. And they're like, okay, well, the grandfather, or the the original guy from Infant Island and the grandson, make Mothra a symbol out of desks from, like, a school, and they call Mothra in to fight Godzilla. So Mothra's fighting Godzilla, and that's a pretty good fight. It goes back and forth. And again, Mothra's kind of outclassed by Godzilla, but, you know, she puts up a really good fight. Um, that being said, Kiru does show up eventually, uh, Mothra gets beaten up, Kiru shows up, they're fighting, um, it doesn't go too well, uh, Kiru gets, like, knocked out, basically, like he does every fight. The twin offspring of Mothra hatch, and they come back, and they come to fight, um, Godzilla, um, they show up just in time, Godzilla's about to blow them up, but, uh, Mothra, uh, adult Mothra, sacrifices herself to save her babies, and then the baby's eyes go from blue to red, showing that they're pissed, and they start fighting Godzilla. Um, the uh, the nephew ends up fixing up, uh, going out to fix up Mecha Godzilla because he got damaged. Uh, the Shobinjin help him out, uh, show him where to go, and he gets in it, fixes Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla is working again. They fight. Um, the baby moths wrap up Mothra, or not wrap up Mothra, they wrap up Godzilla, a la Godzilla vs. Mothra, the original. And Kiru, they're about to destroy uh, Godzilla, but Kiru, uh, his soul comes back out, grabs Godzilla, and they fly them to the Japan, uh, the Japan Trench, and they fall in. Um, the people eject, uh, the guy, that the repair guy, rejects out. Uh, in time, gets saved uh, from basically drowning uh, by the hotshot pilot that he had a rivalry with. Um, very Top Gun, but eh, it doesn't really go anywhere at the same time. Uh, but anyway, so that happens, and then the twin fairies and the twin Mothras return to their island into the setting sun. And it rolls credits, and it's all happy. But wait. There's a post credit scene. Uh-oh, what's going on? Why are we doing post credit scenes in Godzilla movies? Well, because everyone's doing them. And it shows a canister filled with DNA from numerous kaiju. And it state, there's a voice that said, states bioformation experiment about takes place in extinct subjects. So, uh-oh. 
maybe the Japanese Defense Forces trying to cook up another kaiju, doing some special evil projects on the side. Again, the only issue with that is we don't really get to find out because the next movie is not a canonical sequel. So we, we never get to find out what happens in that universe, but we can assume more monsters keep coming because we're going to be making these movies forever. So here we are. Um, this one was pretty good, all things considered. Uh, I definitely recommend watching it, checking it out, seeing if you like. If you like Mothra, if you like Mechagodzilla, if you like Godzilla, always always check it out. Uh, this one's better than, in my opinion, better than the previous one. Um, I found a English dub, so that was good. Uh, much easier for me to watch versus the English sub I had to watch last time. So maybe that, I'm guessing that affected my opinion of that movie considerably. Again, I'm not a fan of subs. I prefer the dub. Just it's easier for me. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Less processing power. But I mean, I like to watch movies to watch movies. I don't like watch movies to have to read and like pay like super close attention to everything that's happening. I mean, I can, but it just it eats. In my opinion, it eats up a lot more time than just sitting down to watch a good old movie that would. You do it for fun as opposed to doing it for like intense like watching but anyway that's that's kind of a either you like it or you don't like it and that subs versus dubs i mean everyone has their own opinion but anyway, yeah this one's pretty good uh check it out um mothra looks pretty good her her update for this movie i mean she looked pretty good in, the, in uh all monsters attack as well so but uh yeah uh coming up next it's godzilla final war and that is the final movie in the Millennium Edition and final Godzilla, Toho Godzilla movie that currently exists. There may be more at some point, but for now, that's all we get. One more movie, and that's that's all that's left. And we're only a couple days out from Godzilla, uh, the new Godzilla movie that's coming out in theaters, so I'm getting really excited. It's later this week, only a couple days away. So, all right, guys. Have a good time, and good night, folks.